now, of course, we've done a lot of focus on our care receiver our, and our loved ones, as well as focus on a little bit of the communication with our care teams. And now it's time to focus a little bit on you um, and to acknowledge some of the, the emotions that come with caregiving. And it's, of course, important to recognize that you know, your position is not an easy one. Um, it's full of ups and downs, but can be challenging and rewarding at the same time. Um, you'll see on this slide uh, just a, a small list of some, maybe some common emotions that um, maybe all or some of you might have experienced at one time or another. Um, you know, feelings of, of gratitude, of guilt, frustration, joy, sadness, being overwhelmed, feeling resentful, or being worried or even potentially thankful. Um, it's important to know that all of these emotions are normal and part of the caregiving journey and part of the experience and a normal part of caregiving and to to accept them as part of that process and part of that experience. Um, of course, it's important to acknowledge stress when we experience it in ways we can, what things we can do to manage it. We want to recognize those early warning signs of our stress and our emotions and identify what the possible sources of that stress can be. So reflect on it, think about it. What causes, it causes you stress? What makes you more stressed? What are your warning signs and what are your triggers? Because everyone's are different and everyone's limits are different in what they can handle and what they can't. Identify what you can and cannot change. This is an important one. Too often do we find caregivers seeking to change something that's totally out of their control. Um, again, um, looking at uh, an example you know, here through our cancer center, you know, the, the behavior of the disease in itself is not something that we have any control over. Um, but we have control over what we do outside of that, you know, with our, our routine, our diet, our exercise, and other ways we can take care of ourselves. Um, we want to be able to look again, look at the things that we can change, not the things we can't. So some of the things we can change is the way we look at things and our perceptions. Um, potentially, we can even change certain situations by um, involving other people or offloading some responsibility or seeking help. And then we can change the way we respond to stress and the way we cope with it by getting the support that we need and by developing healthy coping mechanisms and ways of taking care of ourselves and, and handling our stress. Remember when stress is neglected, we, it puts us at risk of other health issues, of disrupted, we're disrupting our relationships. It can cause other mental health issues such as depression and really, again, decrease the quality of the care that we're providing when we're neglecting ourselves and under a great amount of stress. And again, further to that point, it's important that we take care of ourselves. Probably the most important aspect of caregiving is finding that time for yourself to do the things you want to do. More or less, you know, it kind of relates back to that cliche of, you know, you're not going to be of any good to anyone else if you don't take care of yourself. And it really does ring true. Um, one of the things, you know, we encourage our caregivers to do is to kind of come up with an action plan of some kind so where they can somehow introduce self-care into their normal routine. Um, now, self-care should be something that you want to do, not something you have to do. We all have those things in our lives, responsibilities that we can't get away from, but this is your opportunity to really do something for you um, and something that you really value and enjoy and something that brings you um, feelings of happiness and satisfaction. It should be something that's reachable real and realistic. You know, the, the goal here is that we want you to succeed, not set yourselves up for failure. Uh, so when looking at making some sort of an action plan, we want that to, to be realistic and to be within your abilities. Um, you know, you may find that, you know, you don't have much time. So it should be something that kind of allows you to do it within a specific, specified amount of time that you have available to you. It should be behavior specific. Um, saying that you're going to take better care of yourself is not an action plan, um, despite what you might think. Um, we want you to be very specific on how you plan to take care of yourself. How are you going to do this and what is it that you're going to do? It should answer questions such as what, how much, when, and how often. So again, when looking at making a plan, you'll want to think about, you know, how often do I think I can realistically do this for myself? When do I think I might be able to find the time to do it? Um, and how often might it be able to maintain that or do it maybe in a week or two weeks or every month? 
Um, so it is important again to be very realistic in your expectations of yourself and what you know, what you're able to do. Now again, managing self-care um, is one of the most challenging but yet rewarding aspects of caregiving. Um, it can help by uh, maintaining um, Sorry, what self-care actually means, you know, the term self-care, which some of you may or may not have heard, um, it's a way for us to maintain uh, the activities we enjoy and the relationships that are meaningful to us. Um, one example would be you know, someone who has pulled back from a particular group of friends or has stopped doing some of the things they like because they either feel they don't have the time uh, to dedicate to that or they just have neglected it because they just find that there's just uh, too much on their plate. Um, and self care means having realistic expectations again of what we can do and not trying to do the impossible. Um, again, do I have even have the amount of time I need to do what I want to do? do? Um, it focuses again on the things we cannot change or can and cannot change um, and letting go of what we can't. And again, finding solutions to those that we can. It helps us to deal with our emotions in a better and healthier way um, by recognizing that there can be those ups and downs and to not let our emotions control us. So again, we want to set goals and we want to work towards them um, by taking time in our, in our routine and in our lives for, to incorporate some self-care. Um, and again, and further to that, asking for help, uh, one of the most important aspects of, of taking care of yourself. We can't expect everyone to know what it is that we want, um, so therefore we need to tell them and be very specific. And you can see how a lot of this um, relates back to some of those core concepts of achieving good communication. Um, by doing so, it will allow us to communicate our wants and needs and allow us to put the boundaries in place we require to allow us to take the time to care for ourselves. So everything more or less kind of relates. And remember to give yourself the permission. Um, I know it's easy to feel guilty for taking time away from your, your duties and responsibilities to take care of yourself. Um, but give yourselves that, that compassion and give yourselves the, the permission to take care of you.